Hi, my name is Victoria Fisher and welcome to today's episode of Come Draw From The Well. Today we're going to be continuing our Healthy Beginnings series. Um, last time I spoke a lot about what was going on in your kitchen and how to start making some changes to improve your health and the health of your family through what you do in your kitchen, through the water that you drink, through the food that you cook, and even the pots and pans that you use. But today we're gonna to continue um, into the home and talk about some ways to start to improve your health and the health of your family through making some changes within the house. So we're gonna jump right in today. And the first thing I wanna encourage you to do is to stop using plastic whenever possible. Now, it's almost impossible to get away from, from plastic totally. Um, the the pro products that we purchase are packaged in plastic, like your toothpaste is in plastic, the um, shampoo and conditioner that you, you purchase, um, the, the produce that we purchase oftentimes is packaged in plastic. There are ways to get around that. You can uh, purchase shampoo and conditioning bars. I haven't tried them yet. I've looked into them. It's just hair is a, a whole nother story that we'll probably end up talking about later on. So I've found um, hair products that actually work very well for me, but I was just looking at them today as I was getting ready and I was like, this is all plastic. So I want to find a way to get, a, get away from all of that plastic, but I haven't gotten there yet. So just like you guys, I'm a work in progress too. Um, so we want to take a look at some ways to even like, um, with your produce, instead of buying your Brussels sprouts, for instance, that are already packaged in a bag, go to where the loose ones are and get a reusable produce bag. And, and you can do that. Um, same thing with really any of your, your produce. I just like Brussels sprouts. So I picked that one first, but we want to try to get away from plastic. And here is the reason why I'm going to read some information to you. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to share that information with you, but also, you should do your research. This information is out there for you. And the more you know and the better you understand why we make the recommendations that we do, I think it makes it easier to really follow through with that and incorporate some of these changes into your day-to-day -day life. So here are some things that you should know about plastic. Plastic is toxic. It actually is a carcinogen. A carcinogen is a chemical or compound that is linked to causing cancer. So um, DEHP is a form of plastic that's actually been linked to cancer. Plastic is also an endocrine disruptor, or it's, um, it can be known as a xenoestrogen or a hormone disruptor. So what that means is when you have plastics, whether they're microplastics, which it are being found in um, the, the placenta and the umbilical cord of pregnant women, we're finding microplastics in there. They're finding microplastics in our bodies if they're actually looking. Um, so it's something that's really dangerous. But these plastics, like I said, can be endocrine disruptors. So what ends up happening is these plastics, they act like your hormones. So they bind to your hormone receptor sites within your cells and they look like you, the hormones and they fit like a lock and key into those hormone receptor sites, but they don't act like hormones or they act like super hormones and are very toxic. So hormones are really important for everything. Hormones run our body. And a lot of times when people hear hormones, they think of reproductive hormones, which yes, are disrupted by, um, by plastics, but hormones run um, and regulate our sleep cycle. They regulate our mood. They regulate our energy. They regulate our brain chemistry. They regulate blood sugar regulation and digestion. Um, you name it, hormones control it. And these hormone disruptors, when they're in our bodies, they end up, like I said, taking the space up of our true um, endogenous hormones, the hormones that our bodies make, and they block hormone proper hormone activity. So this leads to numerous problems within our body, including cancer, which I mentioned um, a carcinogen is a cancer causing agent. These hormone disruptors also can lead to things like asthma. They can lead to birth defects. They can lead to immune system compromise, infertility, endometriosis. These are things that we are seeing like exploding within our client base at the Well of Life Center. Um, if I, when I'm talking with people um, outside of work, infertility, huge. Um, endometriosis is a, is a, 
really, really big issue with women that is poorly understood by the medical community. Um, from a natural and holistic standpoint, we're realizing that there are many factors that feed into endometriosis, one of them being um, chemical toxicity and, and endocrine disruption through these um, things like plastics, among other things. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. People who are exposed to chemicals, to plastics, um, not only through manufacturing, so you can be exposed if you work in a facility, but you can also be exposed just by, again, I mentioned the packaging of your products. So um, certain products, certain compounds um, that are packaged within plastic, just the nature of those products or compounds make the plastics kind of more volatile and soluble. So the, the plastics kind of become excited. Um, those molecules start to have, they kind of bounce around and be, have that excitatory aspect of them. And they penetrate into the product because of that. Certain things like certain types of fat, certain chemicals that might be in the products themselves can basically pull plastics from the packaging into the product. So you don't have to work at a facility, you don't have to eat plastic, which we actually end up doing with these microplastics um, because of pollution and many other things. Um, but just by this, the, the, the um, process of absorption, these plastics are absorbed into the products that we use. So we really wanna try to get away from them. And one of the other huge things in order to get rid of plastic is to ditch plastic water bottles. We should not be drinking out of plastic water bottles. It's not environmentally friendly. Um, it's it's extremely toxic to our environment. It's uh, it feeds into pollution. Um, but scientists have linked low doses of a plastic compound called bisphenol A exposure to cancers, impaired immune function, which we've already talked about, um, early onset of puberty. So um, young girls and boys are actually going through pu puberty years before they're supposed to. Um, these, this B bisphenol A um, or BPA is also linked to obesity, diabetes, um, hyperactivity, among numerous other things. And this is all from plastic water bottles. So we really wanna get rid of these things. If you are um, dealing with any of those types of symptoms, because remember these are actually all symptoms, um, if you really want to get rid of plastics from your environment, from, from your workspace. Um, don't store your food in plastic either. I may have mentioned this in the previous episode, but we really should be storing our leftovers and storing food in glass containers and glass jars. Um, that way we can also use stainless steel as well, like a bento box or things like that. So when we store it in plastic, especially when you store hot food in plastic or you reheat food in plastic, you're making those plastic um, compounds and chemicals, again, you're making them more volatile. They are more excitatory and they penetrate into our food. So you don't wanna make um, an organic grass-fed steak and have these really fresh vegetables and put it into a plastic container and reheat it in the microwave. You're just canceling out every good thing that was in that meal. So we really wanna be um, mindful of our plastic exposure. So I encourage you to look through your home if you're using plastic water bottles I talked um, a little bit about um, some different water filtration systems and, and um, drinking uh, clean water. So you can look into getting a system like a Berkey filter. That's what I use in my home. And um, I use the Berkey filter. They have two different types of um, filters that you can use within it. So because I live um, in an area that has fluorinated water, I have to use the fluoride filter as well as their standard filters. So um, that is something that I had done my research on. I knew when I moved to this area that I was gonna be exposed to fluoride in my water. So I made sure that not only um, that we were filtering out everything else that was in the municipal water, but then we were able to filter out the fluoride as well. Um, there are reverse osmosis sy systems that um, filter out multiple different things. There are so many different ways to get rid of plastic and use the water that you have access to. I also recommend that you drink out of um, a 
a glass or stainless steel water bottle. Again, I mentioned that before that I have my trusty jar here that I drink out of when I'm home. Um, I have a stainless steel water bottle um, that I travel with or I use mason jars. Um, that's that's my, my go-to. So that is one thing. If you are suffering with immune issues, if you are suffering with endocrine um, and hormonal issues, obesity, diabetes, those types of things, which the majority of Americans are unfortunately suffering with, Plastic is one of the first things that you want to take a look at and eliminating within your lifestyle. So it's spent a good amount of time talking about plastics. Now we're going to move on to your cleaning products. What you clean with really does make a difference. We're, um, again, as a, as a country, we're used to things smelling clean. And when you can smell the chemicals, you know it's clean. That's what we're programmed to think. Now, when I smell chemicals, I smell toxins. When I smell cleaning chemicals, I smell, I smell disease. That's, that's where my brain has been now conditioned to think because that's actually what's happening. So cleaning products contain many, many unregulated uh, substances, many things that have, again, been linked to cancer, that have been linked to endocrine disruption. Basically, everything that we talked about with plastic, you can carry that over into your regular standard cleaning products. So I encourage you to move away from things like bleach and ammonia and um, Fabuloso and Clorox and Lysol and all those things. They are very um, harsh chemicals that can also cause issues with asthma and allergies, um, multiple chemical sensitivity, headaches and migraines. All of those things can actually be linked to the, the cleaning products that we use. Again, just like with everything, I encourage you to do your research, do your homework, do some looking, but be mindful that there is a this, um, this phenomenon called greenwashing. So greenwashing, I'll read the definition to you. Greenwashing is the process of conveying a false impression or providing misleading information about how a company's products are more environmentally sound. Greenwashing is considered an unsubstantiated claim to, to deceive consumers into believing that a company's products are environmentally friendly. So basically, um, companies have kind of gotten on the bandwagon that Americans and consumers want cleaner products. So some of these companies have made things that are natural, that are safer, but have not been certified, that have not been tested. And it's a marketing ploy. They just want to make sure that you're still buying their products. So they market to you to make you think that you're buying something good. A couple of these companies are things like Method um, and Mrs. Myers. They're not clean products. They are marketed as natural. They are marketed as safe, but they're not, unfortunately. There are many other products and companies out there that are clean, that are safe, and you can make your own cleaning products. It is cheap, they're effective, um, and you, you are in control of the ingredients. So I actually make my own all-purpose cleaner that I use in my kitchen. Um, I make a disinfectant that, again, I use in my kitchen and on things like doorknobs, I use it in my bathroom. Um, I also will make my own carpet freshener uh, with baking soda and essential oils. Um, so basically the products that I clean with, um, I make it, it with water, vinegar. Um, I will use vodka or a grain alcohol if you have access to it. Um, the higher percentage um, alcohol products are natural disinfectants. So they naturally kill viruses, bacteria, and parasites. Um, vinegar and essential oils are great at killing fungus and mold. And when you combine the vinegar, the vodka and or alcohol and the essential oils, you cover all your bases. You're getting cleaning products um, that are effective, that are safe and that actually do the job. So they're effective at cleaning. They're also effective at dis disinfecting. So I would definitely recommend doing that. Um, I just looked up um, on like Pinterest or Google or things like that and, and found some things that I, I was able to use. In my bathroom, I do use um, some more natural uh, bathroom cleaner products. 
just because the bathroom tends to be the place where the most happens in terms of what um, what types of toxins you may be exposed to, but also what type of germs you may be exposed to and tends to need a bit more cleaning. So I still do use some um, natural cleaning products in my bathroom as well. But I encourage you to look at the cleaning products that you're using get rid of them, um, make your own. It's not as difficult as you think it may be. And oftentimes you will save money when you do make your own. Now there are some brands that have, that are much more sustainable and that have um, like use glass spray bottles and just use either concentrates or tablets or pods or things that you just add water to it. And again, it's more sustainable um, and, and is a more cost effective. So you can definitely look into those things, but I encourage you to change your cleaning products and also change the mindset that if you smell chemicals and it smells clean, that it's clean. Oftentimes some of these cleaners, they just kind of move messes around or you can't visibly see the dirt, but the germs and the toxins are still there. So you want to make sure that you are using things that are going again to clean, um, but that will also be, um, that won't be toxic and that will be effective in getting rid of germs. Now, um, again, I mentioned that we kind of associate a clean smell with the chemicals. When something is truly clean, it doesn't have a smell. So if you are associating a clean chemical or a chemical smell with clean, you're, you're, you're wrong. You've pro we programmed our brain to think a different way of, to think of something that's not actually true. When something is completely disinfected, when something is completely clean, there actually is no smell. Um, so when your home is clean, when your, your counters are clean, when things are, um, are cleaned properly, there shouldn't be any residual smell from it. So um, that is one thing a lot of people think, well, if I clean with vinegar, my whole house is gonna smell like vinegar. It smells like vinegar initially, but as the vinegar evaporates, it actually neutralizes odors um, along with it, and there's no residual smell from, this, from the vinegar. So I encourage you to use that. Talking about smells, we're gonna move on to fragrances in your home. This is a big one. Um, I highly encourage you to remove all scented candles unless they are naturally scented from essential oils so your yankee candle your bath and body works products your glade plugins get rid of them there is nothing beneficial from them and they are loaded with toxins so scented candles, air fresheners, plug-ins, um, your Febreze or whatever um, kind of odor eliminator you're using, I, I implore you to get rid of them. Um, with the word fragrance, there are actually 3,163 ingredients hidden behind that word. So the word fragrance hides a multitude of sins. Um, there are, there's really, again, very little regulation um, from, from certain entities when it comes to the word fragrances. And the other thing is because of proprietary blends, companies don't have to actually disclose what's in their fragrance blend. So they don't have to tell you what chemicals they're using as long as it's not banned by the FDA, which by the way, the FDA bans very, very, very little to almost nothing. So the FDA allows many, many things that should not be in our homes, in our bodies, in our, um, in our stores, anywhere. Um, so these proprietary blends contain these chemicals that again are almost completely unregulated and about up to 80% of these scented candles and plugins and air fresheners are fragrance. So you really have no idea what you are exposing yourself to, your family to, your pets, all of that just by breathing it in, just by a, um, it being exposed to your mucous membrane. So our eyes, our nose, our mouth, our skin, our skin is our largest organ and it is porous and we can absorb so many different things through our skin. Um, so sometimes the, uh, the acid mantle of our skin, which is the protective layer, is compromised because of the products that we use on our body, which we are going to talk about in another episode. But the products that we use on our body and the foods that we eat disrupt the acid mantle or that protective layer on our skin. So then our skin is open to all these things that shouldn't um, be absorbed in, but we can actually absorb through, um, through that exposure as well. So chemicals and things that you are getting from your fragrances in your home include um, synthetic musks. 
So synthetic must have the ability to interfere with our hormones. So again, they're hormone disruptors. They build up inside our bodies, including breast milk. So nursing and pregnant women and women who are looking to get pregnant, if you are using these products in your home, you're actually accumulating it and storing it in your tissues and it can cross the placenta, cross through the umbilical cord into baby, and it can also um, pass into your breast milk from your mammary ducts, and that would, then you are exposing your child to those chemicals as well. So we wanna stay away from things like synthetic musk. Another chemical or fragrance, uh, chemical in fragrances, I should say, which is also in plastics and many, many other compounds is called phthalates. These chemicals are responsible for binding the smell to the product itself. So it's why it smells so strong or smells so good, according um, to some people. So it's the candle or it's the oil or whatever it is, the phthalate binds the, the scent to the product. Um, and here, phthalates are carcinogenic. They cause cancer. They have been scientifically linked to cancer. They can disrupt your hormone activity. So once again, they're a hormone or endocrine disruptor. They reduce sperm count. So the infertility issue that we are dealing with is not just dealing with women, it is dealing with men. Over the last few decades, men's sperm counts have dropped exponentially. And it is estimated that within the next like 20 to 30 years that the, that the average American man's sperm count will be next to zero. So male infertility is also on the rise. And one of the reasons is because of these phthalates. Phthalates also can um, cause reproductive malformation, so issues within the formation of the reproductive tract. So the uterus itself can be bifurcated or it can be too small. There can be, um, there can be obstruction within the fallopian tubes. The ureter in a man um, can, be, can be disrupted and you can have hypospadias where the opening to the urethra is in the wrong position. And this can actually, all of these things can be linked to reproductive issues. Phthalates have also been linked to liver and breast cancer, diabetes, and obesity. Prenatal exposure. So in utero, if a baby is exposed to phthalates, this has also been linked to an increased risk of autism, ADHD, and other neurological disorders. So the rise of neurodivergent um, diagnoses that we're seeing can be linked to exposure to some of these phthalates as well. So this is what you're getting in your fragrances. And uh, yes, I'm talking about home fragrances, but these fragrances are also in your perfumes and your colognes. So I will say it now and I will reiterate it. No perfume, no cologne, plain and simple. If you want to be healthy, I'll leave it there and we'll talk more about it, especially when we start talking about hormones and um, other things like that. So phthalates, again, like I said, are, are connected with neurological disorders. Um, and again, they can actually, they've been shown to have more of a reproductive system um, issue or being linked to reproductive issues within boys, um, especially when it's when, boy, when uh, boys are exposed in utero. So we are seeing a huge rise once again in fertility issues, and it could be linked to some of these chemicals. Home fragrances also contain formaldehyde. Formaldehyde, yes, that's embalming fluid. Formaldehyde can be exposed, you can have exposure to that in many different areas. So your, your plugins um, can contain formaldehyde. Other things like uh, pressed wood and cabinetry, upholstery, carpeting, flooring, all of those things are actually treated with formaldehyde and you can have off-gassing of this formaldehyde. So yes, it's an embalming fluid um, and um, morticians have actually stated that over the years, especially ones who have been in the industry for a long time, have noticed that they have to use less and less embalming fluid to actually preserve a body. Something to think about. But formaldehyde in plug-in air fresheners have actually been found to produce um, uh, that considerable amounts of formaldehyde, and this is known as a human in, human carcinogen. So once again, formaldehyde is a cancer-causing agent, specifically though of the nose and throat. So to a lesser degree, th uh, formaldehyde exposure can actually cause things like sore throats, chronic sinus issues, coughs, scratchy, watery eyes, nosebleeds, um, some of those environmental allergy symptoms. So formaldehyde is something you absolutely want to get rid of. Paraffins are also mostly in scented candles. Paraffins, though, are petroleum-based products, so it's derived from petroleum, the same thing we get gasoline and fuel from. 
Um, and these, when we burn paraffins, that releases acetone, benzenes, toluene, um, which are all known as carcinogenic agents. So again, these are all cancer causing agents. And this is just burned into the air that you're breathing in um, when you have a scented candle or when you have those little um, scentsy melts or things like that. So you want to be removed, you want to remove those as, as much as possible. Uh, these paraffins also can um, aggravate or exacerbate respiratory problems. So again, if you have asthma, allergies, COPD, emphysema, um, you can have exacerbation of your symptoms when you're exposed to paraffins. So again, if you struggle with any of those issues, um, chronic allergies, sore throats, sinus infections, respiratory issues like um, asthma and um, COPD, you should be removing fragrances from your home as well. So we spent a lot of time on those fragrances, but there's no need for them. There's absolutely not a single benefit from fragrances other than the fact that you think it smells good. So we can get great smelling products from um, beeswax candles that are scented with essential oils. You can also use diffusers um, like reed diffusers or um, vaporizing diffusers and use essential oils. Um, and you can just smell fresh air. <laughs> just open your windows, open your doors, get fresh air blowing in um, because we're gonna talk about that next. That's a good segue, hey. So we're, going, we're talking about fresh air next. So your indoor air quality is extremely important to your health and here is why. So the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, has noted that excess moisture, volatile organic compounds, carbon monoxide, and radon are four major indoor air pollutants. So it's actually for some people, especially if we live in certain areas, if we don't, if we have poor ventilation, if we don't open our, our doors and windows because of seasonal allergies or outdoor allergies or whatever it may be, we have a buildup of these compounds in our home and our indoor air can actually be more toxic than the air outside. So the air that we breathe while we're sleeping, where our body's supposed to be in our parasympathetic healing and restoring mode, when we're breathing in that air, it's more toxic than the air that we get outside. And that's, that's a problem. Um, our home should be a safe place. Our home should be the place where we can go to, uh, to really help our bodies heal. So when we have these indoor pollutants, it causes numerous issues. So we can have respiratory diseases, again, like asthma, allergies, COPD. Heart disease and cancer has actually been linked to some of these indoor pollutants. Um, and they can be severely debilitating for people, again, who have multiple chemical sensitivity or other issues. And sometimes these things can even be fatal with carbon monoxide and radon. So it's extremely important that we improve the air quality of our home. So some things that you may need to be looking at as potential sources of indoor air pollution are fuel burning combustion appliances. So if you have gas heat, I'm sorry, oil based heat, um, if you have, um, if you use kerosene, if you use um, even wood burning stoves and things like that, um, especially if you're using uh, pre-treated wood or unnatural wood, we want to keep an eye on those things. So fuel burning or combustion appliances are a source of pollution indoors, tobacco products. And this isn't just if you smoke um, or your family, some of your family member smokes, even if they smoke outside. If you can't even open your windows. So I live on a pretty congested block. I have a twin home, so I share a wall with a neighbor and they smoke. So I can literally smell the smoke through the walls. Um, it's not my brain. It's not my mind. It's not my head. Um, I actually am very sensitive to chemicals and that's actually something that has been a trigger in the past for the migraines that I suffered with. Um, so I can't oftentimes open my windows in the summer and in the spring when it's beautiful outside because the people on my block are smoking. Um, and also that smoke actually permeates through the walls. It's been proven and shown that um, if you smoke indoors, that smoke penetrates your all of your porous surfaces. So drywall is a porous surface. The flooring, um, especially if it's hardwood, carpeting, um, and that can over the years kind of seep in through all these little cracks and crevices and you can be exposed to that as well just by the simple fact that you live next to somebody who smokes. 
Um, some other uh, potential sources of uh, indoor air pollution are building materials and furnishings, which I mentioned before. So I mentioned like your pressed wood products from um, from cabinet cabinets, um, hardwood, especially the synthetic hardwoods. All of those things actually off gas formaldehyde. We also, um, if there is an older building that has uh, asbestos containing insulation or asbestos in certain tiling or things like that that can be extremely toxic. So we want to be mindful of, of all of that. If you have a new build, um, a new built, newly built home, if you are renovating um, and you're getting new, new, anything new, really, honestly, if you're getting new upholstery, even on, on new furniture, you want to be able to kind of air out your home, use an air purifier, something to get those toxins out of the air. Um, a new mattress is actually another another way that you can be getting some of these toxins, um, these indoor toxins. So you definitely want to allow things to air out as much as possible. Again, open your doors, open or open your windows, open yeah, if you, your screen doors and things like that. But also try to use um, an air purifier. Air purifiers you can actually get very small ones that are very cheap but effective. You can also spend thousands of dollars on air purifiers. So whatever's in your budget. Well, um, we can talk about that as well, but you want to take a look at um, an air purification system to try to mitigate some of these um, indoor pollutants. Another way that you can get um, some indoor pollution is products from household cleaners, which we talked about, the home fragrances, which we also talked about, even personal care products or hobbies. So if you use epoxy resin um, or if you, use, if you paint and you are... Um, you're upcycling things so you if you're renovating and and um, redoing cabinets furniture um, repurposing things so if you're sanding staining painting all of those things that can be toxic and create um, indoor air pollution so you want to do those things outside as much as possible get as much ventilation as possible and use um, proper masking um, goggles, gloves, all of those things. So you're not getting that exposure as well. Central heating and cooling systems and humidification devices can um, cause indoor air pollution, especially if they are not operating properly. So uh, for instance, I had to get an air scrubber on my heating and cooling system because there was um, the possibility of some moisture buildup and um, they wanted to mitigate and prevent any mold growth. So I have an ozone air scrubber that's um, connected to my heating and cooling system. And that actually has made a difference in the air quality in my home. So I would encourage you to look into something like that if you need it. Uh, if you have excess moisture, so if you live in a very humid area, in an area that was flooded, um, if you have a lot of um, heat generated from certain appliances and um, certain certain things within your home that actually can can build up moisture that moisture is a great breeding ground for mold and mold is is basically a silent killer almost like it mold can cause so many different issues that we are again from a from a medical standpoint they know very little about from the natural health world, we are finding mold toxicity connected to autoimmune disease, infertility, multiple chemical sensitivity, chronic neuro neurological Lyme symptoms, all of these things, plus many, many more things are connected to mold exposure. So it's good to have a dehumidifier, um, air purification system, and proper mold remediation, um, which is actually very difficult. So that's again, something that we can d dive deeper into, but we wanna try to eliminate that moisture. You can also have outdoor sources of indoor pollution. So radon is an outdoor source, depending on how the foundation of your home is built or the foundation of a building is built, you can have radon exposure seeping in through the foundation. So that's again, something that's coming from the outside that can come into your home. Um, this is one thing that I, another thing that I see in many of my clients is that they are exposed to pesticides because of proximity once again because of where they live they're exposed to pesticides if they live near a farm if they live near somebody who um who is spraying their lawn outside if they live in a development and have a homeowners association or they live in um, an apartment complex that is treating the pesticides of the whole neighboring area 
again, it just blows right in and we can't do anything about that uh, except for um, an air purification system. Also, outdoor air pollution can also get into our home, obviously, if we just have our windows open. So that's kind of a catch-22. If you live in, in a city, for instance, that has a high rate of air pollution, um, but you also live in an apartment building in a city, you might be exposed to, you have a double whammy there. So you have the outdoor exposure that can get in and then you have everything that's inside. So if that's the case for you, I highly recommend that once again, you look into a good quality air purification system that are air purifier that's gonna help to mitigate some of that. Because we can't, we can't live in a bubble. This is what I tell all of my clients that we can't live in a bubble. We're always gonna be exposed to something we have to control what we can control and um, change what we can can control. So if you have access to changing some of these things or all of these things, you should implement every single possibility within that. But we can't live in a bubble, so we're going to be exposed somewhere along the way. So it's just something to keep in mind. So some ways that another way that you can actually help to purify your indoor air is to get some house plants. Um, for some reason on this most recent birthday, birthday that I had, I'll tell you guys, whatever. I just turned 40 and all of a sudden I have like 12 house plants. I don't know how that happened. I literally went from zero to 12 within a very short period of time, but I was very purposeful in the house plants that I got because of the research that I was doing. So, um, I can share this with you, but also I'll just run it down real quick as to the list of indoor plants. Um, and what you can get and why they're beneficial. So first, actually, we'll talk about why they're beneficial. So houseplants can reduce irritation to eyes, ears, nose, and throat because of their natural filtration properties. They can prevent or ease coughing and congestion. They can lower your stress levels. They boost your attention capacity. They reduce levels of carbon dioxide because um, plants have, uh, through photosynthesis bring in sunlight, bring in CO2, break it down into oxygen and they release oxygen into the air. Um, indoor plants can also increase the levels of humidity without using a humidifier because again, with too much humidity, we have the potential for mold growth. So we can naturally increase um, the humidity if you live in a dry area just by having house plants. House plants can also actually reduce EMFs. EMFs, we are going to definitely have probably multiple episodes um, talking about EMFs, but that will come later, but we will be talking about that. So again, I'm just gonna run down a quick list of some of the top house plants that you can have. Just be mindful that some of these may be toxic to pets or children if they're consumed. So just make sure you either um, have them in an area where they can't be reached or you don't use them, or you know that you've trained your pets well, but, and children well, that they won't eat them. Um, so Gerber Daisy, Bamboo Palm, English Ivy, Dragon Plant, Snake Plant, Peace Lily, Spider Plant, Mass Cane, Rubber Tree, Lemon Button Fern, Pothos, Philodendron, um, Parlor Palm, Aloe Vera, Broad Lady Palm, Fetonia, Ficus, and Flamingo Lily. These are all air purifying plants. So have at it, go for it, um, get all of these plants. Plants are a natural way, again, to really purify the air of your home. And again, I read off some of those other benefits where you're gonna reduce the EMFs, you're gonna improve the humidification within your home. Um, you're gonna reduce the levels of carbon dioxide, help to even lower your stress levels. So getting some plants is a great way to actually help your health. So I recommend that you do that. As I mentioned before, we can't live in a bubble. We can't do everything to counteract the, the toxins that we're exposed to and the, the, the trouble that our bodies are up against on a day-to-day -day basis. But change what you can control, support your body in a way that you will become more um, apt to handle and endure the stressors placed on your body and in your body. Um, so that's what we want to do is get our bodies as healthy as possible so that when we do come up against some of these things, we are better equipped to handle them. But we can't handle toxins if we're constantly being exposed to toxins. So take these steps, get rid of your, your air fresheners and plugins and scented candles, get rid of plastic, get rid of those toxic cleaning products and get some house plants. And th those are easy, I believe, simple ways that you can start getting healthier right away. 
So hopefully these are helpful tips for you. If you have questions, please reach out. If you want more information, I will um, be sharing some of the resources that have, for the research that I did. Um, so we'll be sharing that with you. And tune in for our next upcoming episodes. Um, I really appreciate you listening in. Hopefully these things are helpful for you. And again, if you have ideas of topics that you want to hear about or you want information on, let us know and we'd be happy to do that for you. Thanks and join us again for Come Draw from the Well. Thank you.